Hello and welcome back to another episode of Live here on Keystroke Medium. I am Josh Hayes here with Scott Moon and Papa Chuck, Chuck Manley. And welcome to another week of, we have absolutely no idea what we're talking about, but it's going to be a great show. I think we have some idea of what we want to kind of wiggle our way into as we talk. Let's see, Rick Partlow, look, this is dedication because Rick is on vacation right now. In Yellowstone. Right, he's in Montana. Or something. Uh, I think he's in Wyoming. He's in Yellowstone. Or Wyoming. And he is still the... I mean, this is dedication, folks. If you don't have Rick Partlow level dedication to watching this show, I mean, still come watch the show. And there's not really... But, there's not any but negative. Understand your place. Know your order. order. Right. Your prospects That's in it. life are diminished if you don't have that type of dedication. <laughs> <laughs> How can you possibly be successful without... You know, he probably had to like hike 14 miles through the you know wilderness to find a rest stop with some Wi-Fi connectivity, and then you see him standing on top of the hill, like holding his know, phone up, trying to get signal. Yeah, like, so solar charging first. his phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, everybody That's else true. in the live chat, welcome. How are you guys? Let's see, Luke Bartlett's here, Bart of today. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, fa 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 fa. Big Ben is in the chat. Hello, welcome. Who else is in here? I'm scrolling by, and all I'm seeing is part low, part low, part low, part low. Well, Bar Bard's in there is asking Rick if he does much reading. Uh, oh, Scott uh, Scott McGlasson's in the house. Hello. Good old Hello. Scott McGlasson. Welcome. And oh, Facebook user is there uh, as always. Hello. Facebook, Facebook user is, is one of the superstars of the show. Number one fan. Uh, the world, Rolls the worlds of William, William Allen, Allen Webb. There's Webb. nothing better than a good morning ramble. That Wow. That, You're that, absolutely right. Nice branding there. It's true. <laughs> well, every, uh, hello, Keith uh, Taylor. Howdy. How are you? Every week we talk about topics and things like that. And, you know, I, I've suggested some some real winners. I was suggesting what's your favorite color. Um, <laughs> and I, I think we could fill an hour with that. Uh, no, actually, we do of, have a topic. But we'll get to speaking of coffee, I've got writer's block behind me. If you're in need of some great, phenomenal coffee. We Keystroke were talking coffee. about coffee keystrokemedium.com slash coffee get your own writer's block we were talking before the show i ran out of coffee filter oh yes I used, yes i used my final coffee filter yesterday and then did not go to the store to replace so this morning before i could do anything i had to go to the store so i went to sam's club and i got 700 coffee filters so i'm good for like two years on coffee filters that is a lot of coffee filters dude i don't you even know you like, could like use them for no reason. Like I don't, even, I'm not making coffee. I'm gonna run mean, some water through this filter. <laughs> I have I have uh, brewed hot water before. True story. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, good morning, uh, Nagling. How are you? Um, so uh, we don't have a a plan. I figure we do a free for all kind of a an AMA, just a general about writing. I've got some ideas to talk about, but first, let's get to updates. Let's do Scott today first. Oh God. No, um, Orphan Wars two launched on sunday may 2nd is very excited it seems like it's got a pretty pretty good uh reception i'm very happy with that um i haven't looked at it yet today um each book that that i do i i try to draw back from like constantly refreshing the the ranking every five minutes to see if it's changed and so now i'm a little bit a little bit more calm about that but so far it seems <laughs> to be doing really well people are people have asked about the audiobook i don't know when the the audiobook's coming out for orphan wars 2 but it was really cool. Uh, I guess last week one of my big highlights was that um, that uh, Luke Daniels did a live reading. That was pretty cool. He's that wearing, his, really cool. wearing his, his 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 reading hat apparently. And I need a hat getting like into that. it. Yeah. So it was really fun. It's super cool. You know, I think back to when I first started listening to stuff with Luke Daniels. I think it was Ember Wars when I first heard. No, it was uh, Terms of Enlistment. Oh yeah, he did great. Terms of That's a great book. Yeah, he's that was one of his early ones, and then uh, Ember Wars. And I remember learning about Podium when I first went to Smarter's Artist, 2016. I thought, man, someday if I could only get to Podium, because you, at the time, then it was even harder because you you couldn't approach them at all. They right. would select who they wanted. They still kind of do that. And so the fact that I got a Podium deal and Luke Daniels is reading it, it's like a dream come true. So that's sometimes you have to put things in perspective. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I I thought it was really cool when he read uh, Terra Nova when I got the first audio samples for that. It's amazing. Uh, I was like, this is so cool. Also, I got to point out whoever Facebook user is apparently thinks my fa my hair is on point today. Which I mean, come on. I even got the hard the hard part. I don't know if you can yep. see it. See, he started out with 
step one of having hair, which is <laughs> one of the prerequisites the, to uh, put it on point. Thing, the, the talk bad about the host thing. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. So uh, good morning, James S. Aaron. Welcome. Scott McGlasson says Sam's Club so many things. That's true. And so it many is. things of each thing. That's More of a Costco right. guy. We should have a Costco versus Sam's Club uh, scavenger hunt war or something. Oh, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. I um, but so like to wrap up what I was saying is just that uh, all the guys on the show, sometimes on the show, but definitely behind the scenes, you'll hear me kind of beat up on myself. And sometimes you got to keep in perspective that just because you shouldn't compare yourself to other people. And you know, I'll look on uh, Twenty Books Facebook group, and people are like, "I made a hundred thousand dollars this month," and you just it's it's easy to get lose perspective so sometimes you have to count your wins and really <clears throat> don't take them for granted so that was good um working on other projects and uh work went okay and that's about it you know doing family stuff and just kind of keep it on grinding it out i've got back onto a better writing schedule because i started watching um yellowstone after josh said it was good so great show. And, yeah. It's, so it's very entertaining, but it got me thinking, it got me back in. Like when I watch a really good movie or read a really good book, it makes me want to write. And so that broke me out of my funk because I'd kind of been falling down the video game hole, which we can talk about later if we want, but they really are not your friend. So that's about it. But oh, you, guys. I, you know, just to, to tack onto your point about um, uh, not Bait, judging yourself against others and and people making a crap ton of money for me it's all about you know are you enjoying the process or not yeah and you know money That's is point. is important um but i mean if you're making good money but then somebody else is making an astronomical amount of money and then you put yourself down just because you're not making that astronomical it's not what it's about in my even opinion. a little bit not even your primary bit. goal is to make money. There are easier ways to do it than. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. If you're making enough money that you can maintain the lifestyle you have and write all the time, yep. welcome and to have the party. fun at it. That's and have yeah. fun. Welcome that's to the trick. party because that's where that's you know that's really all you need. Yeah. The, the The whole point is if you turn writing into like a chore that you that you kind of resent, then you're missing the point. Because I could have just stayed at my regular job yeah. if, if I wanted to. Be pissed off about going to work every day. Martin. <laughs> yeah. Or you can buy a movie theater. Barta today says he's listening to the Metroid soundtrack while watching us, and it adds a really eerie feel to the Ooh. show. I, you know, I have to say, I love the Metroid game on Super Nintendo. I played that all the time. Um, and I can hear the music while he say that. See, I'm going to have to look it up. It's great I've been music. a while since I played it. I always like when he goes into doors and you hear that. <laughs> Could, that might be the wrong sound, but it's close. <laughs> what kind of updates you guys got? <laughs> Chuck, what do you have been up to, man? Oh, uh, <laughs> usual stuff. Uh, very, very closer and closer to Jack Dark 2 being done. Uh, been working a little bit on Jack 3 when I've got, you know, in between this and that. Um, have ideas. I, I'm just, I'm having a hard time focusing these days. I just got too many things bouncing around in my head. But uh, share Scott's uh, funk issue, so I've not descended into video game. I think I, I've let myself get so caught up in the ideas and planning things that I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. Right. Yeah. But I'm, I, I've actually hurt myself on time of things that I'm actually should be doing. Right. Um, but, it's not the uh, worst trap, but it is definitely. But it, but a, it is. Gotta watch yeah, out for. You know, especially when you've got. Like if it was just me doing my own thing, like I've always done before, it'd be fine. But you know, I got the guys at Athon that are going to help me out with this series, so you know, I don't want to hold them up forever. Right. But uh, and you know, that's one of the reasons I've always said I wouldn't inflict myself on someone in a collaboration because you know everybody just, wants Papa Chuck inflicted on them. Eh, that's I, just, right. I, don't, I have no. <laughs> You know, I just kind of do shit my way. That's just how I roll. But um, that's the best way. But, uh, yeah, that, my daughter's got high school um, junior varsity softball tryouts coming up next week. So we've been uh, getting her prepped for that. And my son, one of my son's shows wrapped, and he started auditioning for the stuff for next year. And so I've been helping him out with that and just, you know, doing what I do, man, doing my thing. We just wrapped up micro T-ball for my four-year-old, and... 
I just got to say, if you're ever in the mood to just start punching yourself in the face repeatedly, take your kid to micro T ball mm -hmm. because yeah. holy crap. Dude, that and, is pure comedy though. Come on. Uh, well, so my, my daughter played regular T ball for like two years in the first round of regular T ball. I was like, <clears throat> but micro T ball is really just like, if you were to take your kid out back and throw the ball around with him and like, practice swinging or whatever that's micro t-ball except that's you're it. you're on, on you're on a you're on a team on a baseball field with 20 other micro t-ball little kids running around trying to do stuff uh it, it so it, it was only four weeks he got a little metal uh and he was super excited and i was like my, you didn't do anything for that i'm just kidding he did he, my, he did a really good job he liked running the bases that was his favorite thing was running the bases there you go get some cardio my my, my oldest son when he played i think it was t-ball he made me proud because I looked out there in the outfield and he was at one point building a castle <laughs> and the other point he was practicing some sort of ninjonics sort of ninja kicking stuff out there yep. in the outfield. I'm like, yep, that's, awesome. that's my son. It's just that's awesome. like my daughter is in, in machine pitch now. So it's a little better, but like every time like that they switch the bat, I, I yell at it. Look at the batter, put down the dirt. Look at the batter. Put down you're the one of, You're one of those dads. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I yeah. know why we didn't see that coming. <laughs> well, it's funny because in T-ball, the ball goes someplace, and all of the kids on the team run to the ball. They just yeah. chase it all. Yeah. And in machine pitch, the ball goes someplace, and nobody moves. Everybody just – they're like, somebody else is going to get the ball. I'm like, go, oh, get it. Yep. Uh, uh, so yeah. that's Pure wrapping comedy. up. Yeah, we're uh, we we we're finishing up. We have a couple more games for micro T ball, and then summer league starts. And we found out this week that summer league games don't play on Saturdays, um, and that's our lake day for the most part. So we were like, okay, well we'll be able to do summer league now, and uh, got the boat all set up and ready to go. I was itching to take it out this weekend, but uh, kind of got a little overcast, and we did. Yep. Uh, before I get into my update for sure, I want to say happy birthday. To Ellen Campbell and Lisa, I, I wrote it down here on my notepad, my handy dandy remarker. Lisa Richmond and Ellen Campbell, happy keystroke medium, happy birthday, birthday clap of to you guys. Birthday this. Happy birthday Thanks. to you. I'm not singing this song. You should. Sing. Yeah, we shouldn't because it'd be <laughs> recorded forever. Yeah. You know, when you sing in front of your family, you can pretend it didn't happen. Well, you uh, sing it online. It's sticking with you. We'll edit that part out of the show. Yeah, Let's see. Uh, what have I been up to? I've I've worked a lot on uh, Savage Stars, not Savage Stars, uh, this week. Because um, <laughs> I still haven't figured out a name. I, uh, I What I'm going to do... Stars. What I started to... I did it last week. I'm going to do it after the show today before I go pick up my son. I started walking around the neighborhood dictating, pulling kind of a Kevin J. Anderson deal where he walks through the mountains, except I was just walking through my neighborhood. Uh, and... Walked about 40 minutes, got about, I don't know, 1,500 words or so. Um, and, um, of course, I, I still got to clean them up and edit them a little bit. But I got on a really good roll. About about five minutes into it, I was just going at it. And then halfway through the walk, <laughs> I, I came up against this woman walking her dog the same direction that I was. Oh, I and, that. And, and so I, like, cut across to try to take another sidewalk, but then the sidewalk ended. So then I spent 10 minutes walking back across this big field because I, the sidewalk didn't go where I needed to go. And then I ended up and right by her anyway. And she's calling 911. There's this guy. He's following me in, the, <laughs> he's he's talking in, he's in, the, in the grass. And then he's he popped up again. Shooting yeah. people. Well, and she thought <laughs> it was funny because she thought that I was avoiding her because she had a big German shepherd that was not on a oh. leash. And she was like, the dog's friendly. He doesn't do anything. I'm like, oh, I'm not worried about that. I just didn't want you to think I was weird. I was walking by talking I'm to a myself. psycho. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what did you say to that? Did you tell awesome. her that? Uh, I just said, I, I'm just, I told her I was dictating, but I don't think she understood that I was writing a story because I. Right. She probably thought you were a doctor. Because yeah. doctors oh, have beards ooh, a lot. Yeah. yeah I'm a, He's I'm a bearded a doctor. doctor. Uh, and then I'll just say nurse scalpel while I'm walking past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let's see what else have i done um i have i finished um the gray man book six and now i'm on book seven and i was telling scott i know i've talked about the gray man a couple of times yeah you have yeah. but this is the first i told him when we were talking on the phone yesterday this is the first series since 
I can't while. even remember when. It's been a long time that I've actually like made it a point to find listening time because normally I'll I'll have a book and if I happen to be doing the dishes or I have to be happening to be driving somewhere I'll turn it on and I'll listen to it. Um, but very rarely do I get a book where I'm like looking for things to do that I can also listen to the audiobook with. And yeah. uh, so I I I've spent all of most of last week finding things that I could do to finish the book six that I was listening to and that on book seven. Wow. And um, it's, it's such a good story. Like every single story is a really good story and there's so much that happens. Um, and it's one of the only stories that I think that is the, probably the only story that doesn't feel info dumpy ever. Um, yeah. Like I read, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm reading book two of the Jack Carr uh series um the terminal list and this is true believer and there's uh 40 of the book and really nothing has happened uh and he, he opens up some chapters and you get a little bit through the chapter and you're like this person's gonna die but he spends six pages telling you about this person's history and then kills him i'm like well i didn't need to know all that other stuff you could just kill him um but anyway good 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 stuff the gray man and uh um Apparently, Lisa says that the, on book nine, he goes to like some first person present tense, but then goes because uh, right now it's third person limited. Right. And, and that's yeah. I love for third person limited. Uh, that's but great it, for the genre, for sure. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he goes to first person present for one book, but then then goes back. I don't mind first. Per, yeah, that's first crazy. Person, but present. It just throws me off. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I just. I don't know. I don't like it's, that. it's hard because I've actually so uh, Legionnaire has written first person present tense. I wrote all of my brothers in arms trilogy first person present tense, and Orphan Wars is first person present tense, and there are advantages to it, but it's hard to maintain. Yeah. And well, I, I, also find, think, I find it's easier to do it like as a short project rather yeah. than old, like if you're going to do it, you could do it as a short story or something. I just it, I could never do it. In, it gets uh, weird, though, because if you've done it long enough, then you forget your, you know, it gets to the point where going back to first person past perfect, it it, it feels weird. So yeah. and I'm, I'm doing stories in bold. Well, I'm doing uh, Blue Sun Armada is in third person limited. And Orphan Wars is in first person present. And so I flip back and forth between those every day. And it's kind of weird. It's kind of jarring sometimes from a writer's perspective. Yeah, I bet it is. Alan Webb says that uh, <clears throat> the Gray Man series is getting a movie. Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's uh, it's either a movie or a series that I think uh, Amazon or Netflix is doing. Uh, yeah. He's saying Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling would be a pretty good choice for the Gray Man. Like yeah. Uh, what's that. up, Kayleen? Hello? Uh, Nathan Petal says someone needs to offer Josh a razor. I don't. This they've face, been talking about your beard for a while. This, this face yeah. does oh, yeah. not get a razor. This has not. This face has not had a razor on it in two years. Yeah, and and we'll never have. Congratulations. Two no, years, and that's as long as it's got. Well, I mean, I've trimmed <clears throat> it since then. Oh, I, try, I just don't take a razor to it. I've got a beard trimmer. Uh, let's see. Uh, Corey Gillum says David Baldacci. Is that how you pronounce it? Bal I say Baldacci. Bal Baldacci. Baldacci. Yeah. Did yeah. an event where he told us how to become a person of interest while doing research over the phone on while a train. While on a train. Yeah, I have, he, <laughs> I've heard that story. <laughs> I don't, I've never heard that story. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, basically, he was just, re I forget what he said he was researching, but he was, you know, he was looking into stuff for one of his thriller books and somebody noticed <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> uh let's see let's uh let's talk about some writing stuff um uh i go ahead talking about talking about talking about tenses and stuff i yeah. actually i really kind of want to write something omniscient and I, I was going like to start Hitchhiker's, a project. hitchhiker's guide to the yeah Galaxy like omniscient? like uh, like omniscient well stephen king does it quite a bit he'll do it for like an opening pair. He just does it whenever he feels like busy, does whatever he wants. Right. But I'm curious, <laughs> I'm curious to, if done well, how that would go over. But I also, I don't know. It, it may be something that takes a couple of years to get right. Cause I think you could really easily jack it up. Wasn't Dune omniscient or was that just head hopping? To it's the probably more head hopping because back, Dune was more head hopping, yeah. back then nobody gave a shit about head hopping. If you read older science fiction, they do it all the time. Yep. Constantly. Yeah, but Absolutely it's all classics. True. 
and nobody cares. But if you do it now, you are actually literally the writing devil and yeah. you need to be scourged through the town. Well, and people had a different attitude towards books back then too. Yeah. I mean, because they didn't have the plethora of distractions and immediate uh, entertainment options that yeah. exist today. So readers today are, I don't want to say they're a little more uh, attention Oh no, for sure. There's so many more. I mean, even just in books now, now you can have thousands of books on your phone where, you know, a hundred years ago, you might have five books in the house and that's what you got to read. Yeah. What? Well, I, I'm going to get, uh, probably stoned in town hall for this or uh, town square. I I I didn't, I didn't like Dune, the book Dune. I've, I've read it once and I, I didn't really enjoy it. The um, first book is hard. I like the second book. I, I did. I like the core story, but I did not particularly enjoy Herbert's prose. So it's yeah. interesting because I, uh, you know, there's a new movie coming out. I think it's coming out this yeah. year, late this yeah. year. That's a, a Dune. It's not a sequel. It's just a, a reboot kind of movie, and it looks really interesting. And yeah, so what it looks I, great. I don't it looks know. phenomenal. <laughs> um, and then, and I've watched the other movies, and uh, I just, I, I can't. I, I try to watch them, and I can't. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a there's a channel on YouTube that. Um, breaks all the books down and he spends about two hours per book, like really kind of diving deep into the lore and talking about this, this other, and actually his, uh, version of the story, the way he breaks it down is way more interesting than actually reading the book. The the interesting thing about Dune that I've thought about a lot lately is that, you know, when was that written? Like in the fifties or something? Uh, maybe yeah. I'm not sure. Like initially, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty well, sure it's, it's late 50s. It's, it's interesting that the core of his world or universe building is basically uh, built on the the prohibition against machines that think. And so, yes. kind of that idea, of the dangers of AI is that he 1965. came up with that, 1965, yeah, 65. about you know, because I mean that's back in punch punch card computer times <laughs> and for him to cons- to think that how bad an AIs could be and how much problems they could cause. I mean, you just look at it now, just the AIs for like, you know, Facebook searches and stuff like that, how problematic they are. Imagine if we get, you know, like 2001, a space odyssey AI and beyond. And so I think it's interesting. And it's that it doesn't seem like an original idea now, like lots of things like Ender's game doesn't seem that original. If you read it now for the first time, right. But if you read it when it came out, you're like, Holy shit, this is brilliant. This is totally new. And conversely speaker of the dead was just a horrible slog of a book that I hated, but the, but the actual premise. So it's just, it's interesting. I think with those, those old truly innovate or like another one is snow crash. If you read snow crash, when it came out, it talks about multiplayer online gaming basically taking over and people living in cyberspace. Well, when it was new, I remember having a hard time even visualizing it. But people that read it now for the first time, that's like everyday experience for a lot of people. They're always, you know, in their in their online gaming universe. It's Somebody very- was saying that uh, Rhett, Rhett's new book, uh, Rhett's new book, Rhett no, no, Bruno's no. new book, uh, Vicarious, uh, they had a problem uh, selling it. Uh, because of the uh, before before COVID hit, they had a problem selling it because that's basically just a whole bunch of people living through the eyes of other people, and it, it it's it's like the Truman Show, but on like a massive scale. And mm-hmm. a lot of people were having trouble with the idea, but then once COVID hit and nobody could leave, and everything was done almost entirely virtually, then people were like, oh, "Okay, we get this book now, and it's selling really well." It's it's interesting though that the I wonder if there's going to be anything written now. Uh, I, I don't know that there's anything really super groundbreaking now that in, in 50 years we might think is is uh, commonplace. Probably Not that I can think of. Probably don't know it. We won't see yeah, it right. during our time. We will we'll only realize that in hindsight. So I don't That's know. true. It's a theory. Yeah, probably. You, I mean, probably I read something. Ender's Game when it came out new back in you know, yeah. 86, 85. I don't know. Yeah, I was, but, and um, I was young. I and think then I was it young. was like, oh, this is a good book. You, yeah. you, know, you didn't know it was going to be what it has become. Yeah. Yep. Probably what we look back in 50 years is something with Valor in the title will be. Like, I can't <laughs> believe it. They came exactly. up with that. <laughs> That's so this awesome. Is innovating a val- innovation of Valor. <laughs> innovation or, the, or, of Valor. or fill in the blank stars. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what you should do. You should just True. throw a blank on the cover 
and invite the yeah. reader to write in their own descriptor. For That's stars. not a bad idea. What's the book? It's whatever you want to call it. It's, it's, it's a bestseller on Amazon, it. whatever you want to call it. Blank you stars. Name. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just make it, uh, just call it Savage Stars, not Savage Stars. It's like a, uh, it's like a choose your own adventure title. Right. Exactly. <laughs> It's a bestseller on Amazon. Nobody knows what it's called. You just call it whatever you want. You can be like, I spent 300 hours slaving over this book. You can kick in for five seconds and help me out with the title. Just help me out yeah. with one word. One, one word. damn That's all word. I need. Just give me something. <laughs> it's always good to guilt your fans into doing something. Damn right. For you. you did do the Tom Sawyer for them. Boy, it sure would be fun to name this book. <laughs> See? Uh, I, You know, it, it's funny because talking about pros, I, I, I've been um, – I found I find myself depending on what I'm listening to at the time, it kind of affects my writing a little bit. Um, and so like writing action scenes. Now I go back and I, I was reading some of the scenes that I wrote last week and um, I sound a lot like Mark Greeny in his series. And then I go back and I read some of like in the Valor books and I, I, I feel like I, I write differently in those books yeah. than I do now. Um, and not so much of a like complete change of style, um, but just like little things here and there that kind of affect well, it. Well, I mean, the thing a lot of people don't realize is is when you read something or when you watch a TV show or something with a very specific cadence to the dialogue or whatever, that voice sticks in your head, right? You know, and and even especially if, you if you're mean... sensitive to it, is it like writers are sensitive to language? Exactly, and, and if even if you don't mean to you know, it, it's going to be there while you're trying to do your own thing. So, yeah, I absolutely think uh, that uh, you can be influenced that way. When, when I was what a lot younger. his name was? Greeny? Mark Greeny. He's the guy that writes the Gray Man. Yeah, I'm going to check out this Gray Man thing. If you I, uh, for seven books, it must be pretty good. It's uh, the first book. Like, it's interesting. I'm struggling with the first if book. You, if you get through the first book, the rest of it's better, which you were like, just make a good first book. Um, <laughs> the, the first book is... It's good, but it's you should, almost too over the top. Like it's over the top. Like it's 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 yeah. a men's like action wise. Yeah, yeah. it's so like here, it's yeah. definitely men's action fiction, and it's like this. Like you're like James Bond. Like it's written for a certain audience. Right. Um, but there are some scenes in the book that you're like, ah, I'm having trouble with yeah. that. I'm, I'm yeah, having so trouble with it. Yeah, it's so, a little too fast and furious the, for me. Yeah. <laughs> The big thing is, is so if you read it, I think you should read the first book as a reader. Do not read it as a writer, hmm. because oh, there's some. I can't 100%. read anything as a writer and enjoy it. I just yeah, yeah. It, it, because I, once you start picking, once you start picking at the scab, so to speak, you just can't stop. Yeah, and right. there's it's a few. Th you, man. There's a couple of, couple of, maiden butler scenes with one of the antagonists that just make me cry every time I read. Oh, them. in the first book, yeah, in the first book, but that's yeah. only for a part of the first book too. So it just depends. So. I'm 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 going to finish that. Then I'm going to go on to the next ones, and 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 I'm curious about the rest of the series. Fafa Fa says uh, Valor of Doom or yeah. uh, Doom of Valor should be a, a good. Ooh, Savage Valor. Ooh, that's actually like really like good. Uh, and and Nathan says like he's troll Rymo. says I don't write. That's true. That's true. I haven't <laughs> updated that in a long time. I, that was going to be part of my update. I am I'm maintaining my three thousand words a day so far this month because it's only day three. I think my and I haven't worked yet. It. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, every time, like every day, I'm done, I, and I get up and I, I walk away, and then I get upstairs, and I'm like, "Man, I should update the sheet." Now I'll do it later, and then I don't ever do. I'm it. I'm just gonna start filling in Josh and Chuck's things, but always a little yeah. bit less than I do. Yeah, <laughs> just I feel good about myself. Feel free. He writes in like Josh wrote 15 you words can, today. You can use negative numbers in mine if you want to. Yeah. Uh, um, Lisa says in the later books, Greeny develops a character with a, a great, a really great dry sense of humor. That's true. Uh, what's interesting, I think, about the first book is, um, and I think where the Maiden Butler comes from is that there's absolutely no setup for the story. There's absolutely no time yeah. for you to learn who the Gray Man is and all that stuff. So you, he had to tell you like why he's a such a kick-ass guy and so he does kind yeah. of in the mater butler type thing there and actually um, that that kind of worked but there was that part because like it's kind of the john wick where they talk about how bad you don't you learn everything about the protagonist through the eyes of the antagonist is like yeah john wick one time he killed a guy with a pencil <laughs> you know and you learn all this stuff rather than just having so, you know him talk about doing the same thing 
And so that wasn't too bad, but there's just, there's just a few scenes and maybe it's sometimes with narration, sometimes you get tuned into things differently and stuff, but, but I do enjoy it. I, and the other thing is I've had like five authors I know asked me to listen to their audio books. And so I keep listening to them and getting sidetracked and yeah, and stuff and whatnot. So what do we want to go forward talking about the, the serials or we talk more about yeah, this, let's do that. This, this other types of things. Cause so you're talking you about the, the, the Vela thing, right? Yeah. Have you guys played with that at all? I haven't. I, I watched uh, Chris's Chris Fox did a video mm -hmm. on it last week. Um, and long story short, he, he doesn't think he's going to use it um, just because of how readers are reading right. uh, and not in that format where they're, mm -hmm. Some readers are waiting until the entire series is done, or some people are 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 not wanting to pay for serialized fiction, and and uh, it's interesting because he made a good comparison to Royal uh, Royal Road, and as yeah. far as I know, Royal Road is free to sign up and read, yeah. um, and this would have to be a paid service. But also, it's it's almost like a contradiction because with Ku, you pay a flat fee and you could read as much as you want all over the place and a vela it looks like you have to pay for tokens and those yeah, tokens you buy some, the tokens i'm not sure how it depending. works I'm trying to gamify the, reading uh, which maybe people will like I don't yeah know. each installment can be has to be a minimum of 600 words and a maximum of five thousand. and you basically every so many hundred words is a token so it's kind of like a place for yeah. people to spend all that worthless bitcoin they're buying it's kind of <laughs> Kind of. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. But I mean, I, but I also, you know, get. I mean, I didn't, business wise, yeah, I don't, I don't really know that it's a great, great deal. But I was thinking about it in terms of if it would be good for the harder sell genres like like Weird West and superhero and stuff like that, you know, if you or if you that. had a good following or you had like kind of a yeah, niche group. Had, right. You know. Or if you just wanted to write that and just have it out there, you know, I mean um and you didn't because, want to spend a ton on book covers and all that stuff. Yeah, you just have the one little there's one little picture that for the whole series and then and when you think about it uh, stories like that kind of work for serials, especially if you're writing like a superhero thing. Right. You know, you're, it's basically an issue every week or whatever. And then same thing for, because when you say serial to me, I just, I always think back to the old, you know, Buck Rogers and Doc Savage and the Batman, you know, the movies they used to do way yep. back when and the little radio dramas and things. I love listening to those sometimes. I always think about the Green Mile from Stephen King. Yeah, Green Mile is an excellent example of a more contemporary one. So I don't know. I just, I just thought, you know, it's hard to sell novels in those genres, but I wondered if, if uh, the shorter bite-sized pieces might, might work better in that format. Might be a great place for creative expression. Or you can get it out there because it would be copyrighted once you launched it. I mean, it's yeah. copyrighted anyway once you create it, but it's easier to show that, you know, you did this if it's published. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I think that if you already had something, like maybe you had a, 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 a trunk novel or something that you kind of wanted to rework um, <clears throat> uh, and it wouldn't take a whole lot of effort. Because I, I think that if you if you use it as just kind of like a bonus and not really rely on it as a, right. A, this is my income. You know, I could, yeah. it could, I could be wrong. It could take off and make people gajillion dollars. If it does um, take off, it'd be good to be on the, in at the beginning. On, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But anything like that's always a gamble because if it doesn't take off. You just wasted your time. Right. And maybe and unless you like just you like said, the, Royal road and even Wattpad. I mean, these are basically the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all like that, but so, I don't know. I, I just thought, you know, number one, writing serials is kind of a different format. It's fun. You got to have, you know, more cliffhangers right. and kind of things. And, uh, I just, I just wondered what y'all thought. Cause I, I, uh, uh, I think I might, uh, depending on how it kind of rolls out, I may take my second star series and break it up and maybe, yeah maybe tweak it a little bit and see how it works. Cause it's not published. It could be cool. Um, uh, well, let's just see because I know it's already been published and it's published out in, in paperback, and I'm not sure exactly what the rules are for Vela if it can be published at all or, or republished or whatever. I'm pretty sure it has to be brand new elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, love to see. I don't know, man, because it, it like it, 
it's interesting because with the way like Netflix works and like we saw it with uh, the Mandalorian and uh, I can't remember what else, what, what was the other show that happened right when that happened, but it was basically when they, they released the whole Netflix did a whole season of whatever it was. And then the Mandalorian came out episode uh, episodically every week mm-hmm. and people were mad that they had to wait a week to, to see the new episode. And like, it's kind of a complete change in, um, uh, meta because it they used to just be that's how it is. But did, uh, did so I'd be curious to know what the results because that was kind of an experiment. And I'm, I would be curious to know what the results of that is. And I bet you that it did get them because part of their goal was to have people sign up for their subscription service and then keep the subscription. Right, but if you right. sign up, you get the whole series. Then you just unsign up. Right. Um, well, so that's my thing that too. Like. There, there's also a, a a window of conversation that happens that builds interest in the show. So like, oh yeah, I can't. I wish I could remember what was the 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 show because it, uh, you could see that one show came out. It it everybody binged it and then everybody stopped talking about it. But every week when a, a new episode of Mandalorian came out people were kept talking kept about it and talking alive. about it. Yeah. And it, the, and it the, the Witcher was like that. The Witcher. The, maybe I it think. was the Witcher. Maybe it was yeah, the Witcher. You just watch the whole thing and then you're done with it. It's over. Yeah. You get yeah. a month. It gets a month in the spotlight and then it disappears. Yeah, right. And they were, they were like you said before, they were just, they, they wanted, didn't want people signing up for one month just to watch that show. Right. And then uh, one other month, three months later when another show they like comes out, you know, that's what right. most folks were doing. I think with Netflix's model. And I don't blame people for that. And, no, and, and I'm just, all. and I'm curious, just a lot of things. So, because if, if you're required to have the entire series drop at once, that basically means that creators, whether you're writers or video makers have to make an entire series and hope that it's a success, invest all that time and money right. and drop the whole thing. Whereas if you decide I'm going to write a trilogy and it doesn't take off, you can move on. You 100%. spend two years writing a seven book series that turns out nobody wants. And, and I, I wonder if this Vela thing would be a good way to test ideas. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that that was know, another thing I thought it, but if you're going to do that though, you, uh, I don't know that you'd want to go with a paid model. You know, well, you might yeah, be better off too. on Wattpad or Royal Road or something where you can just or, say, "Hey, I'm working on this, looking for feedback." You know, or a newsletter freebie maybe to your yeah, something like that. Current fans, give them give them a little reward for. But I, I I wouldn't feel good asking people to give me money for something that. Yeah, I saw I, some I'm, people kind of working on. You know, right? I saw some people talking about maybe using it as kind of like a a new form of beta reading. Um. I don't know how Amazon would feel about that. Well, I think because they can put the whole thing out and get feedback on it and then pull it off of Vela, fix it, and then drop it on Amazon yeah. as a as a novel. Yeah, I guess. Um, There's which, easier ways probably. Yeah, I, but... There is easier ways to do it, but then you're also getting paid for the beta. And I, I don't know. I, and that's it why I think... It could be a proof of concept type of thing too, though. Right. Yeah, I uh, I think that like I said before, I think if you, if you have something that's just setting aside that you're not doing anything with that you can do as a bonus and not kind of dict- uh, dedicate a whole bunch of time to might be worth it to try it out. I don't think I'm going to do it. I don't have the time on, on, unless, on a, unless I, unless I could do it with the second star series. That's already almost, I mean, I'm, I'm I've only got one well, book I also thought it might be fun for like if you're going to do a dedicated short story collection. Like if I wanted to do a, a, oh, a yeah. short story collection of Brace Cordova adventure stories, you know, that could be yeah. cool. You know, you know, and, and it's like a each, completely separate thing. It's a complete yeah, and each each little installment is its own little thing. So if they read one Brace Cordova story, they're like, oh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna watch, I'll try the next one, you know, there, and so on and so forth. There was, you know, and it could be a way to kind of push yourself creatively. There was a story, and I wish I could remember the author. I, I can't remember what blog I read it in, but there was an author in New York that he used to type in a cafe, and he would write as perfectly as he could on his first draft, and when he finished the page. He would put it on the window facing out, and then when he finished the next page, he would put it on the window facing out, and people would would read that as he wrote it. Really, I've never heard that. And, and I can't. I wish I could. I'll have to look that see if I can find that story. But it's very interesting because talk about putting yourself under the microscope and and, wow. and putting some pressure on your on yourself there. That's on actually- a serious on a serious note, uh, Guy Anthony DeMarco says he watched the 
two whole seasons of the Mandalorian and never once no one played the mandolin. I, I paraphrase it. He's, he's, he felt ripped off. <laughs> it's false advertising. It really was. Uh, what I, well, that's actually a really interesting point you made, Chuck, because I didn't I didn't think about that in in a. So we look for funnels to bring readers to our exact uh, our product or our IP, and if you've got. You know, say you've got a uh, something like Galaxy's Edge, or even like the Valor trilogy. If I if I've got other little like I short Valor episodic, either pr uh, prequel short stories or just tack on side stories yeah. or whatever, and you can write like a, a four or five thousand word. It's not connected to anything else, but it's in that universe. But it show, but it shows people, hey, this is what these these are what these books are like. Yeah, you know, it's like a like a first one's free you got to pay for the comeback that's uh that's actually not a bad idea and it could drive sales to your other books too potentially potentially i and like you that know, and you probably don't make a ton like you wouldn't make a ton off of the vela thing but if you're just using it as, as part of your funnel then who gives a shit right exactly well i mean and, even and if there's no cover to invest in and, right you know it's not as long as you've got a nice edited story well let's just say let's just say for the sake of argument you make a hundred dollars off of you know let's just say in a year you make a hundred dollars off of one of those short stories yeah. which is it's no money at all yeah. but uh a hundred dollars is average for um anthology payments i mean yeah. you can get yeah. higher or lower or if you're getting like ebook royalties from a, a collection of a short story or whatever you get a hundred dollars a quarter or something like that um it's not any amount of money to write home about but it's it's a little bit of money for your effort and it's uh and it's still a funnel back into your uh, it goes back to what i was saying earlier about about kind of being appreciating how far you've come and things because i remember when i got my first re actual rejection letter from I think it was from Daw Books for Warbright. Um, no, this was for uh, at the time it was called Michael Priam and a Chaos Broker, which became Dragon Badge. But um, but the fact that a human being had read my story made me oh, the happiest yeah. person alive for about a week and yeah. a half. Right, because you know prior 2010 or 2011, you know you might write for years. And like three people that you convinced to, to write, read your stuff, read it, you know, like your mom and maybe one or two friends that at least read enough to pretend they read it. And they all loved yeah. it. It was the best thing they've yeah. ever read. But now right. you can, you know, so you can get out there, you know, enjoy your writing, get some feedback, you know, feel that, that, cause there is a certain pleasure that we don't want to lose track of, of sharing your story. That is really actually a very magical right. thing as a yeah. writer. And it's easy to lose the, the uh, specialness of that when you're worried about, hitting this word count and making this much mm. and maximizing this Amazon ad and, you know, getting, you got to treat it like a business, but you also want to keep the passion. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've told this story a bunch of times and I'll tell it again. Damn it. Um, <laughs> tell it again. <laughs> tell it again, Sam. Well, I did the, I did the, the query submission rejection mm -hmm. tango all through the late eighties and nineties yep. with magazines and publishers. I mean, I did, I did it the classic Brutal. way and, uh, you know, eventually I, I got frustrated, but I was talking to a guy who had gotten, uh, shit, I can't even think of his name now. But he had written a couple of thriller novels and they had gotten published, which at this point in time was a big ass deal because there was right. no, this was before Amazon existed. Yeah. Okay. So I, he was doing a book signing here in town and I went and sat down and just started shooting the shit with the guy. And he told me that he had a deal for a hundred K. And by the time that check for a hundred K got from the publisher went through all of the lawyers and agents and all the shit in between him and the mm -hmm. publisher, he got $18,000. Man. Because everybody was taking a bite out of that, out of that deal. Yeah. All the way down. And I, at that point I was kind of like, you know, I just like to write. I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I, I do, I was doing a lot of the video game stuff. I'd write stories for these guys and they'd play them out and they'd tell me how great they were. And that was satisfying. I'd write right. a story. My, my mom, my friends would love to read it. A friend of mine who's an artist did an art show at the, at, at UAH up here, the college here in town. 
and he had all his paintings hanging and for like half a dozen of them i wrote short stories that people could sit like pick up a copy of and sit there with the painting that's legit. and read the story that yeah. You know, I didn't get a dime for any of that, but I loved every second of it. And that's why I've never really, I don't have that burning desire to be published. You know what I'm saying? It's like, look, as long as I can do what I love to do and people enjoy it. Well, it's all there. about process, right? Like, you know? like how many hobbies do you know of that pay you? Right. Uh, like, uh, I wanted to get into uh, drone racing. Like, first, uh, F, it's a f first person FPR. It's where you have the goggles, right? And you fly oh, cool. through the through the I didn't state. Know that was a thing. Oh, it's a cool yeah, thing. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> YouTube yeah. it. And these are not slow drones. These are yeah, fast it looks like drones. an expensive habit because they probably they, wreck a lot. Oh, yeah. Do they set it up in like uh, basketball stadiums and they make these courses where you fly through and you have to do like all these obstacle courses? Yes. You gotta go above they're like and all yeah. neon. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's all first like person. Fun. So it's like you're you're in the drone, like flying it around. Right. And I was like, I want to do that. And I started to look up the prices for these drones. And I mean, you can get into five, six, seven thousand dollars just for the drone itself. Damn. But then now you're talking about the eyewear and the connection antenna, all this other all stuff. The gear. All the and you gear. You also have that, to quit your job so you have enough time to practice 14 hours a day. So 100%. Wreck one of them. Yeah. And and you've got to, I mean, there's kits that you can buy that you can build your own, but you've got all, all these replacement parts. And, you know, I was like, holy crap, it, I dropped $8,000 and I haven't even flown the drone yet. Uh, yeah. um, you know, yeah. and it's same, you know, so there's a lot of hobbies that you pay for and you don't get anything back, right. uh, and writing well and art and, and even like crafting, like woodcraft and stuff like that. Uh, but writing, since we're talking about it is one of those hobbies where you can make money and pay your phone bill. Um, right. Exactly. You and I, like I, I said before, as long as you're making enough to cover your expenses, I think you're doing better than 99% of the writers out there. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. You are. So there's a couple of things on that. Like we, we always circle back around to this is that I focus on money quite a lot because I'm trying to make a specific life change and I feel like right. I'm close. Um, but I also had the advantage of being able to pretty soon draw on retirement. So um, and I have some opportunities. So the caveat is, is when you get to a point where you're writing and you love it, and then you also have an opportunity that could be very lucrative, then I think that you got to kind of really go for it for sure. But the other thing I remember being particularly down on myself one time because my income was, was not as good as it had been, although it was still, still amazing. If you think about making any money at all from writing, but uh, I'd seen a post on 20 books where somebody had said, they were celebrating making their first $600 since they started in 2013. So their lifetime income was $600 and they were ecstatic about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was into it for three years before I broke four figures in a year. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was negative for the first six years. So I spent way more on book production and advertising than I ever earned. Um, but you know, so it's like I said, so you go into 20 books or similar type sites. I mean, they're great. They're a great place. I, I love Craig Martell and all those people over there. But, um, but it's easy to look at the people that post their success stories, which I always read because I'm like I'm looking for the secret. Like this is amazing. I've got the secret sauce. Yeah, and you know, and they're making literally a hundred thousand dollars a month. And but then you realize that ninety nine percent of the people in that thirty five thousand group, group, person group, is making less than six hundred dollars in their lifetime. And so right. you have to be, you have to do it for love. And if you want to make money, you have to do, you have to, you have to do what works, not what you think works. Right. Which isn't always the fun things. Well, that's, that's business though. Yeah. Active you have to be, wear, be werewolf romance. If, genre. It, if yeah. it becomes, if it becomes like, if you're doing it for money, if like you want this to be your job and how you feed your family, then you just, you have to be, you got to go for the business and really to a lot, to some extent, I think you have to ignore uh, your own creative loves well, and desires. You have you to be... find genres that sell. You've got to invest in advertising, good editing, good covers. You know, you've got to become very mercenary about it if you really but, want to make any money. That's yeah. true. But I also think a big, a big pitfall we all step into is that even if we're writing in a genre we love, we're writing the story we love and we happen to be able to sell it. 
it's still hard to stick in that story because even the stories we love get hard or we get, you know, we start being critical of them at some point. And so, and so part of the thing is not just finding the right genre or writing to market. Part of it is finishing what you start writing every mm -hmm. day. Like in the, in the Stephen yeah. Pressfield book, and he says, avoiding video games. In avoiding video games. <laughs> True. In, the, in Stephen Pressfield's book, uh, War of Art, and some of the ones that come after that in that nonfiction series, he makes the analogy I talk about all the time is that if you're a truck driver and your job is to drive a truck from Chicago to Los Angeles, you can't stop in Denver because you're not feeling it. Right. You have exactly. to drive it all the way to the destination. <laughs> True. Exactly. And so a lot of writers, myself included, I get up, I write for 35 minutes, feel like I've worked really hard and I want to screw off the rest of the day. But I'm like, that's so stupid. What other job would I go to work for 35 minutes and go, Hey, I'm clocking out. I'm going home, <laughs> but you can still pay me for the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> that's my tough love section. We can well, no, I, I, I look, I, I fall into that trap a lot. And, you know, sometimes I fall into the trap of, I've got to go pick up the kid in an hour. I don't have time to do anything. So I'm just going to sit here and scroll through TikTok. Right. Because, well, and, but, there, but to me, that's legit. And maybe it's because you and I are kind of both in a, in a similar lifestyle situation. But yeah. like, if I know I have to go and do some, like pick my kid up in 45 minutes or whatever, yep. and I can't just sit down and go, well, I'm going to work for 30 minutes. Right. Because it takes me 15 minutes to really get into it and focus. Yep. And the older I get, the harder that gets, to be perfectly honest with but you. But you would have got 15 minutes. And then I got See, 15 this minutes is, to write, and then I'm pissed because I have to stop, and I yep. take it out on the poor kid. <laughs> I like but if you did Scott, 15 minutes, but if you did 15 minutes a day, and you look back at the end of two weeks, how would you feel compared to you look back for two weeks and you did zero for for two weeks? See, I'd this probably is, still be pissed off. This, this is why Scott is good on the show because <laughs> no, I'm, Scott is great, <laughs> and the, I admire I'm your heavy discipline, on this man. Episode. I really do, but I just I get so fucking frustrated when i get interrupted uh-huh because yeah, once i get into it i mean if i can get into it and stay in it i can go for hours yeah yeah but if i get interrupted you know and, and even said. something is is title your sex tape <laughs> and <laughs> even if something that's only a like five the minute fedex thing man talking. coming to the door and knocking on the door or something i will like slam my hands up, god damn it you know and it's just oh like, yeah uh, oh, yeah i get i, I get that. infinitely more work done on days when I get to sit up and just write as yeah. opposed to when I'm trying to trickle it in through. And lately that's part of the things with the video games made it easier for me to go, you know what? I'm not going to fight for that 15 minutes. I'm just going to play this stupid game. Yeah. But then yeah. you get into that false sense of accomplishment. That right. Those things give you. And that's, but that's a trap, man. Before I got started using the, the video game dopamine hit, <laughs> and we're talking about raid shadow legends here. Um, then I would fight for the 15 minutes and sometimes I wouldn't hardly get any, but sometimes I would get 15 or sometimes I'd get five, but it always was something. I never had a zero day, but if you look at my spreadsheet this year, I've had already had like four zero days where in 2020 when everything was going to hell, I only had three zero days the whole year. Yeah. I'm already up to four and that's not a good trend for me. One of the things that uh, I, my wife said to me, uh, yesterday or the day before. And, uh, it's one of the things I'm focusing on this week. As soon as we get done here, I'm going to go out and walk and, and dictate some words, but she reminded me that summer is coming in like three weeks. And, and that means right while you can, that means, yeah, that means full-time dad all summer. Uh, so I've got to really start pounding out some words now, but yeah. then the light at the end of the tunnel is next year, all the every kid is going to be in school five days a week now. Sweet. So yeah. I can that really makes a difference. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited for really September does. time. So uh, since since I'm ranting and venting all of my inner angst and whatnot, the last thing I want to say, and Josh has heard this talk from me before, is my greatest fear as a writer is that if I let off the gas, I will just quit and never come back. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, some people can take two weeks off and come back. I'm afraid if I if I take two weeks off, I won't be able to start again, and it's over. And so yeah. that's one of the reasons I am so militant with myself about writing every day, even when I don't feel it, because I feel like, because I see people all the time. They used to write a lot. Now they don't do anything. Or yeah. I see people all the time who I played music or like, like the guitar. When I was a young man, I played, I practiced up to 12 hours a day on the guitar. It was my dream. But as soon as I quit, I, I haven't played for years. Mm-hmm. And to me, and that may be my personality, but I'm afraid that life will just push it away because it's so fragile. 
that if you don't fight for it every day, then it will go away. And I think it's interesting too, because a lot of us, uh, I think in this group predominantly are not full-time writers. And so it would be a hell of a lot easier just to not. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, be way easier. I've thought that lots of times going to work. I'm oh, all yeah. stressed out. I'm tired. I'm like, you know what? If I wasn't writing, this would be a pretty good life. I'd go to yeah. work. I'd sleep to get up, play with the kids, uh -huh. go back to work. And I would eat every day. Yeah. And, and that's why and it's, it's one of the hardest things I think to when, like you're talking to, when you get, you get excited about a project and then you get two or three weeks into it and you slow down and you're like, bah, and Scott McGlasson says bored, right? You're like, you're bored mm -hmm. with the idea and you don't right. want to do the work. You want to do the new shiny thing. Now. Yeah. And yep. uh, if you weren't doing it, you could just go outside and jog around or watch a show or whatever. And, and uh, while it is a, a, a hobby that pays, it's also a hobby that takes a lot of work and practice and blood, sweat and tears. And oh, yeah. some, sometimes you're like, ah, I'm out, I'm done. But uh, yeah. it's also extremely rewarding. Yeah, uh, and you so get all these cool the, writer The friends. feeling of having written is awesome. Yeah. It is the best. Yeah. But I think most writers, that's kind of the, that's the dopamine kick. That's the high they're going for. But getting to it, yeah. you know, that's, that's the, the tough part. The A lot of people hate that. writing, but love having written, you know? Yeah. I don't know. 100%. My, my I don't problem know is this. That, but. The satisfaction satisfaction I get from having written lasts about a day. You know, I, I can't. For me, like, it lasts right up until the first reader asks me where the next book is. Right, and then you're like, and then I'm like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> because it takes me months to write something, it takes them a day to read it, yeah, and then they want to know why there's not another one to follow it up, and I'm. Like, hmm. I think one of the funniest reviews I've ever got that was a bad review was, uh, it, I think it was a one or two star review and it was the series isn't done yet. And so the book got a, a so two book, star review and I'm like, drop the whole series at one time. So you're what? a bad writer. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible. Uh, yeah. I, um, I think that, one of the things I like about this group is is watching the positivity that rolls out through the Facebook group all the time. And that that keeps me motivated. Everybody that shows yep. up here on Monday mornings keeps me motivated. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that every season we do this, we get better. And and uh, the people that are in our community can continue to get better and just kill it and uh, make big strides. Uh, uh, Steve and Rhett, they, they're just announced a publishing deal with uh, Mayberry and uh, Weston yep. Ochis, and that's pretty that's slick. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, you know, uh, then, and they're doing something with Kevin G. Anderson, too. And like, I, I, People are making big waves. and uh, It's I amazing to go back. Cool. It's cool to go back kind of like it's kind of like we were in school when we first started the show and to see where everybody's gone now and the things they've done. You know, because, yeah. you know, we interviewed – uh, Nick and Jason before Galaxy's Edge hit. We Athon right. before Athon hit. Uh, you know all these people that have done all these different things and started all kinds of different projects. And um, you know, it's just it's kind of cool. No, one hundred percent. I think uh, you go back and you look at the first season and look at the the authors that we had on the first season and look how many of those authors have made big big uh, moves and. Uh, just oh, really yeah. grown as writers. I think that's uh, fantastic. And it's all because of the show, obviously. obviously. It's, all, it's all, it's all because of obviously. probably if they're, if we'd started the coffee earlier, they would have really. Had some success. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, everybody that came out and hang out with us today. Thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with us as always on a Monday morning. Guy Bard Lou was uh, late, but we won't hold that against you. It's, it's okay. We'll let it go this time. Don't let it happen again. Right. We'll put uh, it in your file. Up, I'm sorry. I, I, I was trying to catch the thing with Ellen on writer's journey the other day and I rushed home because I knew it was close to time and I got in here and I fired up my computer and I got it and I turned it on and I'm like, Hey guys, I'm late. And then they immediately started signing off. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I guess I'm really late. I was yeah. super late. Sorry. They're, they were only five minutes into the show, but when you showed yeah. up, I decided to just, abort. And the wrap up made me think of that. I was cracking yeah. myself up yeah, like yeah. a jackass. He says he's going to do better next time. That's okay. <laughs> we'll, we won't put it in your file this time, but our right. HR doing, is making a note. So. We'll just make a verbal counseling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Coach and mentor. Hey, Kayleen, you're in the chat. What are you guys doing this Friday? 
Uh, I think uh, Wald is going to have coffee and concepts tomorrow. I just got a message that says uh, James is working on the next episode of Marathon Author, so that should be coming up uh, pretty quickly. And I have absolutely no who, who, no no idea who's coming on next week. Uh, but uh, this is look, this is a professional podcast. We do day by day. Things. We're living in the uh, now. We're living in the so moment. Professional. You know, if if Keystroke Medium the the company was a writer, it would definitely be a pantser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would definitely yeah. be a pantser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It actually would be a pantser with attention deficit. <laughs> That's one hundred percent. Four true. days of sleep and too much coffee. That's true. Uh, Kayleen <laughs> says a deeper talk in science fiction. Oh, with uh, Bill Patterson. He, we have met him on the show last week. Good, cool. And she says, so get your asteroid short stories. Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's right for their anthology. Cool. Uh, all right, people. Thank you for coming, hanging out with us. We're gonna come back next week. We're gonna talk about some writing and some reading and everything in between, right here on Keystroke Medium. Peace. Later, folks. Hasta.